All right, we are recording. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to week four of Introduction to Media Communications. I cannot believe it. We are in the last week of the course. I'm not kidding when I say these classes go by super fast. I mean, I'm pretty sure we blinked and now this month is pretty much gone. I don't know how it happened, but here we are. So this week in week four, we are actually going to be going over um, media trends and the landscape of ever-changing media. And then we will also go over this week's assignments. So for starters, media is always changing, as we have already figured out. So it's going to be changing every single day. And you'll have to be able to keep up with trends and apply those trends to what you are currently working on, whether that's a social media project, something with advertising and public relations, journalism, graphic design, web design. I think you get the idea. So why does this matter? So I have a really good example I think we can all relate to in this next couple slides. Blockbuster. I think we all remember Blockbuster from the 90s and early 2000s. I remember going to Blockbuster as a young kid. And I remember going on Fridays, you know, when the new releases would come out and get the latest DVDs. Um, I remember when you would check out, they had like all the popcorn and candy when you would check out. And then you can also see like on the board above the checkout, like what new releases were coming up and the dates when they were coming out. And I remember being like, all right, cool. May 27th, this is coming out. I have to be back at Blockbuster. I have to check out this release. I really want to see it since I didn't go, go see that movie in the theaters. So um, that was kind of like, you know, Blockbuster for me growing up. And then we had like a Hungry Howie's next door. So it's like, after I go rent my movies, I would go pick up a pizza. Um, just some really good times from when I was a young kid. But then came Netflix. And um, I don't know about you, but I do subscribe to Netflix. And if you actually remember in the early days of Netflix, um, you actually could subscribe to Netflix and get your copies of movies in the mail. And that's how it was starting out. And this was actually before it went full streaming. You went on the Netflix website and you got to choose um, which Netflix movies you wanted to rent. And then they would send it to your door, I believe, like next day or something. And then that's how you would send them back to. And even Redbox, I don't know if you remember Redbox. I think Redbox actually still exists, but Redbox, um, you, know, you could rent the movies in like the same day and then take it back the next day for like a fee. So starting out, um, you could get the Netflix movies in the mail and, and actually, fun story, in 2009, Netflix was actually going to buy Blockbuster for about $50 million. It's a lot of money. So... If you're wondering, what did Blockbuster actually do? This may, may or may not surprise you. <laughs> but they declined the offer from Netflix. Um, now, whether or, whether or not that, you know, Blockbuster would have accepted this offer or not, um, we really don't know if their model of business would have stayed the same. Um, or if they would have evolved into like a streaming or a rent by mail kind of deal. So um, therefore, Blockbuster, it didn't survive because they didn't keep up with the trends. And um, Blockbuster actually eventually closed all of their stores regardless. Um, they did try like a red box type of deal. I actually came across a long time ago a... Um, a blockbuster kiosk in the, my local Publix grocery store. Um, they had that, I think, for a few years. But again, that was a long time ago. And I will tell you, it did not last. And I only saw one of those around. I don't know if you saw one of those, but we actually had one here. 
Um, and like I said, Red, Redbox, I believe, still exists. Um, basically, um, Blockbuster, they didn't see the value of video rental by mail. They wanted to keep their model the same where people came into their brick and mortar business and rent movies, basically. So um, this isn't where things were heading now, especially I don't know if Blockbuster would thrive today, especially with the pandemic and everything happening and people like convenience now. We like everything at the tip of our fingers. If we don't have to go to the store sometimes, hey, we don't have to. I know, I know if I have the option of, you know, shopping on my phone or picking something out on my phone, um, I'm, I'm going to do it. So um, just some, just something to think about. So how much is Netflix worth now? If you would like to take a guess. So Netflix is actually worth $225 billion. That is a lot of money. And who knows, it might even be worth more now. Um, you know, they have a bunch of subscribers endless movies and TV shows to watch. And then, you know, we also have, um, it's a big competition out there. Um, we have Hulu, we have Disney Plus, Prime Video, Peacock, and Discovery Plus. There's so many different streaming networks now. And, um, you know, that, that's where people are at now. We are in the streaming age. So, <clears throat> so I will say this, not keeping up with the trends can cost you money. Blockbuster simply did not keep up with the trends or they did not see the vision for the future of the company because you have to be able to adapt and change to things that um, your customers are wanting and they are doing and they are shifting away from the idea of physically going to the store and picking out movies. So do trends in the industry apply to everyone? Absolutely, they do. And here's another situation. So do you remember these um, big box TVs maybe that your family had in the living room? Yes, I remember sitting around one of these TVs in my grandparents' living room and we would watch our favorite um, Christmas movies in the living room and they had one of these TVs. So every time I see this picture, that's immediately what I think of. But now we don't have those TVs anymore. We are in this new age where we have smartphones, iPhones, Androids, you name it. And we even have our iPads. We use our laptops to watch TV. It's how we connect with our friends and our family. It's how we play games. It's how we network. It's how we share images and videos. So I, the world is at our fingertips now. We don't have to physically go get things. All those things are right there in the, on the tip of our fingers. So I think we're pretty lucky. We are, um, you know, we don't have to go to the store almost anymore. We don't, you know, everything is right there. We can shop on Amazon. We can shop at our favorite store and we just go pick it up or they can send it to us. We're actually almost kind of spoiled. <laughs> it's it's so true. And I'm guilty of using all of it, but hey, again, I am a consumer too. And I like what's convenient to me. So hey, I will definitely take a take advantage of all that the technological digital world has to offer. So enough of our story. I do want to dig into our week four assignments. Did you happen to have any questions, Tania, about everything we just covered? No? Okay, cool. Mm. All right, so now I'm going to go talk about our 4.1 discussion. So our 4.1, we're going to talk about media during, during our lifetime, and then in two to five paragraphs, so I want you to describe your experience of consuming media when you were younger. So try to think back to at least 10 years, right? And think about your childhood if you can remember, and then talk about your favorite TV shows, your movies, favorite books that you read. 
social media platforms that you use, radio shows that you listen to, and podcasts, and anything else that you can think of. Now, are these things your favorites now still? And are they still your favorites? I want to know those things. I will even share, I believe I shared my discussion as well, and you're welcome to respond to me. Um, And I do have movies and TV shows I believe that are still my favorite, and then some that were my favorites when I was a kid, but you know, maybe they really aren't my favorite now. Like I have other things that are my favorites now. And, um, you know, the things that we loved when we were younger, we don't love as much anymore. And that's simply because maybe we just don't relate to it now as much. Like I loved Lizzie McGuire. That was one of my favorite shows on Disney growing up. And I, you know, I went back on Disney plus and watch some of the episodes and then don't get me don't get me wrong great show I love Hillary Duff huge fan but again you know I don't relate to the show as much as I do now as I did back when I was in elementary middle school so you know I'm not in that you know middle school high school um fades so um it just really depends on where you're at in your life I think um, and then also talk about what technical technological advancements in your lifetime had the biggest impact on how you consume media. Now, I don't know about you, but probably one of my favorite advancements in technology in the course of my lifetime, and there's been a bunch already, probably I would say the iPhone came out when I was in high school, was a pretty big deal. Um, I remember, you know, I had classmates that would get the iPhone and everybody would be like, hey, can I use your phone? Can I, can I log on to my MySpace? Not gonna lie, I was guilty. I was one of those. I didn't have a smartphone until I was in college, but um, I remember when those came out and then you had to have AT&T and I didn't have AT&T at the time. And I remember that was like the only company it launched on. It was pretty crazy. So, you know, definitely more networks more different styles of phones and smartphones out now to choose from. 4.2 is the Changing Media Trends Assignment, also known as the Cool Hunt. And basically, you're going to look through different resources on current trends. And there is a list of different um, websites that you can choose from. You will need to choose up to three the ones that you find the most interesting, and then write at least three to five sentences on which um, you find that valuable. So there's different um, websites on journalism, advertising, graphic design, and depending on what you would like to go into the most, you may want to pick those sources and talk about them. Again, these you may even want to subscribe to them after you research them. And I say that because, again, keeping up with trends is important. So you will need websites like these to keep up with the current trends because you'll get all the latest stuff into your email and text messages. And it's not to be a pain. It's just simply strategy as a media communication professional. Any questions so far? All right, good. All right, your 4.3 interview and report assignment. So you're going to be interviewing somebody of a different generation than you. Um, So for example, I'm a millennial, so I fall into the 25, 40 range and um, this year of birth here. And then I'm going to want to interview somebody either older than me or younger than me. There are a list of questions that you will need to answer under the 4.3 assignment. So make sure you go under there. And then um, some just some guidelines and some tips for this assignment. So make sure you interview somebody from a different generation other than yourself. Uh, so if you are a millennial like me, you're not going to want to interview another millennial. You want to, you know, again, choose somebody younger or, old, or older than you. Refer back to that chart. And uh, make sure you're doing it safely. I know COVID is still out there. Um, It's flu season. So um, you're welcome to conduct this interview through Zoom or um, talk to somebody in your own household or somebody that you live with, or you can even do, you know, connect with somebody over Facebook and conduct this interview. Make sure you take some pretty good detailed notes. And then you're going to be recording a vlog of just you reporting what you learned during your interview. So have fun with it and um, take some good notes. 
and have fun interviewing that person, see what you learn and come up with. Any questions about that? All right, cool. <clears throat> All right, so here we are, 4.4, and this is your course reflection. And this one's gonna be a little bit different than prior weeks. So you are gonna be getting a taste of what podcasting and audio is like. So you are gonna be using GarageBand, no editing required, and you will be using your Yeti microphone in your tech kit. And then the audio recording, you're gonna be answering these questions. What was the most important thing you learned this month and why you feel like this is the most important thing? And then what were the easiest and hardest parts about using your tech kit items during the course? And then what surprised you the most during the course? So you will be answering these questions in at least one to three minutes. All righty. And we have come to the end of our live sessions in the course. And I do want to leave you with a quote, um, just some words to live by. And this is from a Chinese philosopher. His name is Lao Tazu. And basically, um, he says, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So look at it this way. You are in the first core class of the media communications program. And you're on a journey. And think of it this way. This step is the intro class and you're going on to your next step, which is storytelling. And think of each class as the next step to get to where you're going, to getting your degree and obtaining the next steps in your career and, you know, whatever your goal is. So I really like this quote and it's, um, it's a good one to remember. So I, I do wish you the best of luck um, in your next class. You will have storytelling with Jamie Holmes, he's super awesome. And uh, you're gonna learn a lot in that class about journalism and how to be relatable and talk about storytelling, so. Um, any questions about, you know, things we've learned this week or assignments or anything about anything? <laughs> no, okay. That's perfectly fine. Um, I do teach a few other courses in the program. Um, sometimes I teach marketing fundamentals. Um, we are rotating that course through professor. So it's like month um, four, I believe. So I may, may not be teaching that class at that time. I don't know. I also teach um, project and portfolio one in month 10, I believe it is. And then in month 21, I teach social media strategy management. So you'll have me at least a couple more times throughout the program. And I'm so thankful for having you guys in my class this month. This has been such a great group. So interactive, so engaging. I can't wait to have you guys again. And I wish you the best of luck on your media communications journey. You did awesome this month. You did it. We're almost done. Got one more week left. And then I will be passing the torch to Jamie. So uh, take care. Please feel free to, you know, stay in touch with me and let me know how things are going. And um, I will see you soon. All right. Bye. <laughs>